Hello and welcome again to another episode of the Odd Fellows Oddcast. And joining me today is a world champion, Odd Fellow. Yes. Uh, welcome to the podcast. Uh, and I, I asked you before, do you prefer Jermaine or do you prefer JJ? And you said it doesn't really matter. So uh, I'll just go yeah. with uh, Jermaine today. <laughs> sure, that's <laughs> Hi, fine. Jermaine. That's fine. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. And, you know, listen, I really appreciate you taking the time to join us today. Um, this is, uh, uh, like episode 15 of the podcast and, you know, it's really wow. a great honor that you were, you know, took the time to, to be here today. Uh, so I'm no, sure that, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you having me on. Well, thank you. Um, I, I'm pretty sure that everybody would love to know, uh, a bit about your world champion status and also about your relationship with Oddfellows. You've been in an Oddfellows Lodge for how long now? About four years now. Uh huh. Okay. Wow. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I'd love to hear a story about how it is that you uh, came to be an Odd Fellow because you, uh, over over the past weekend here at uh, California Grand Lodge, you put in an appearance and answered a few questions for people. So I know some of the answers already, but I'm sure that the people that are uh, watching or listening to the podcast are really interested in knowing uh, as much as you can. Uh, so. Please feel free to, you know, tell us how, like, how did you hear about Oddfellows? Well, funny thing is um, I own a gym, West Coast Combat Center, and one of my students has been an Oddfellow for a number of years. And I don't know how the situation came about, but we were discussing, you know, I believe it was, I was telling him that I wanted to do something you know, with the youth, raise something for my youth, my youth class, because where we're located, it's not the best area. You know, we have some troubled youth, you know, it's not just, you know, being bullied, but some are also, you know, gangs and, and so on and so forth. And I had mentioned something like that to him. And he said, you know what, I, I'm part of a group that might be able to help you with that. And we just kind of went along about our way. You know, and then maybe the next few months later, it came about again. And he was like, you know what? I have this group. You should come by. And if you like it, you know, we can discuss further about that. So I came down. I believe you have to come to two of the um, two of the, the dinners, the meetings, meetings slightly. Yeah. And um, but you can't actually take, you know, take place in the meetings. You know, you have to sit outside or after the dinner, you just kind of go home. So it's kind of the meet and greet thing. Surprisingly, when I came to the meet and greet, uh, a, a buddy that I've known since I was a teenage kid was an odd fellow as well. He had been in wow. the odd fellows for a number of years. He's mm. seen me. He said, Jermaine, what are you doing here? <laughs> and I said, uh, I'm thinking about about joining. He said, hey, this guy's good. He's good. He's good. This guy, I've known this guy for years. He said, he's good. He said, you're in, you're in, you're in. And I was like, I just got here. I'm in what? What, what, what am I in? You know, so right when I got in there, you know, I felt I felt homely already because I've, I've already known one of the guys that I had been training with for a number of years. And then this other guy, uh, I've known him, Sam, and Jaime was, is my student. And Sam is the guy that I've known for probably, oh man, more than 20 years. Hmm. So when I got in there, of course, I was like, oh, and Sam used to help me out with my gymnastics and all this stuff back in the day. So of course I felt very homely in there already. Like, oh my gosh, I already have uncles in this place. <laughs> so, so this is a brotherhood. So I have uncles in here. So I'm already in here. And um, wow. we just kind of went from there and it was before COVID. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was able to attend a number of meetings back then, you know, before this whole pandemic started. So it, it, it's it's always been such a great deal for me to be able to help out my youth and, and my community because I was one of those kids. Mm -hmm. If I didn't take martial arts, I may have possibly been a gang member or or, you know, 
drug dealer on drugs. Who knows what I would have been done, would have been. But I started competing when I was 13. Hmm. I, I won national titles at an early age. I, I got to travel all over the world. I was so busy with my martial arts. I didn't even get a chance to play football when I had buddies in high school that were on the team. They were like, oh, we got, we're going to go play football. I'm like, oh, man, I'm a national champion. I have to go to the gym and do martial arts. You guys are all popular at school with the girls, and you guys are getting all the love. And, man, I wish I could go hang out and go to the games and do this stuff with you. But I had to, right after school, I had to get right to my gym and, and continue to train and train and train. And, you know, and it was a blessing. It was a blessing. You know, it, it kept me off the streets. It kept me able to do what I'm doing now. And it brought me into this, you know, this, this wonderful bl brotherhood that I'm in right now. Yeah. Well, that's, that's quite a story. And, you know, I, 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 I don't think that uh, anybody could possibly say that there's nothing good about having the kind of discipline and the kind of, you know, moral strength and will that it takes, you know, to uh, do what you were doing back whenever you were in school oh. as a national champion. So, you know, I, I'm sure that your uh, your life would have been very different had you not got involved with uh, with martial arts. Yeah, for sure. And you started off with uh, Taekwondo, if I remember. Is that right? Correct. Correct. I started Taekwondo when I was roughly about eight or nine years old. Um, my mother was a single mother. Um, you know, we didn't live in the best neighborhood. She put me and I was kind of a little guy. I was a very little guy, actually. And I stayed little for a real long time. <laughs> but she put me in martial arts because she knew that I was going to get picked on, you know, and not just the fact that, you know, we were in a in a kind of rough area. I, I come from a biracial family. You know, my mother is an African-American woman. And my father, my biological father, is a Puerto Rican male, and he he's very fair skin with blondish hair and and hmm. and you know uh, bright green eyes. So it's like, look, you're in a community that there aren't very many of ch there aren't very many children like you. They're either one or the other. Mm -hmm. So and you know, oftentimes kids can be very cruel. They can also be very, um, not just children, but also adults can be very ignorant in things that they don't understand or they don't see. So I've dealt with a lot coming up. And honestly, through the martial arts, through my Taekwondo training, I was able to stay focused because I, as, ba as bad as they speak about Taekwondo now, when I started Taekwondo, my instructor was a Korean man from Korea and he didn't, he didn't understand how it was in America. He hmm. carried around a stick and he used to beat us little kids up. You know, if we did, if we didn't stand there, he would sometimes go in the back room and put us in an attention stance and he'd go in the back room for three, four five minutes. And he would be standing in the back room. He had a double sided mirror and he'd be in the back room, maybe drinking his coffee or whatever he was doing, but he'd be watching us through this mirror. And if we moved, even if we scratched our head and something, you know, we're kids, scratch our heads, turn around, hey, buddy, like start talking and stuff. He'd come back out with his stick and he would get us. <laughs> he would get us. Now, yeah. now you can't do that anymore. You know, <laughs> your gym will get shut down. But back then, and especially in the, in the type of area we were, you know, they were pretty bad kids. So these kids needed that type of stuff. And we got it. We got mm -hmm. it for sure. Well, I'm sure that your mom was quite proud of you for going through all of that. You know, I'm sure yeah. she's very proud of you. Yeah, yeah, she is. She is. She very. She is very much. Now, um, so you went from Taekwondo, and you ended up with uh, Muay Thai as your chosen chosen sport. Or do you you do a variety though, if I remember right? Yes, you yes, fight yes. Fight in different mo uh, different fighting styles depending on. Uh, where you want to go and fight, I guess, wherever you can well, enter yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right now, currently I've been doing Muay Thai quite, quite, um, well, actually since the pandemic, hmm. I have only done Muay Thai fights, but hmm. prior to that, I've done, I was in K1, which was a, a, a large 
international kickboxing organization where they only have a few Americans to fight in that organization. Um, they they pick the best Ameri- They pick the best fighters all over the world. Wow! And and I've been so I was selected at that time one of the American fighters. I was actually the the U.S. poster boy for K one. Wow! And now, what um, is K one? K one it's a it's a Japanese organization that's it's held mainly over in Japan, hmm. but hmm. Um, they migrate to some foreign countries every now and again. But they pick the world's top kickboxers, you know, or, or okay. maybe the or maybe the top Muay Thai fighters. But it is a kickboxing organization. Gotcha, so gotcha. if you're so there is no elbows, and mm-hmm. you know you can't hold on. So it has a very high knockout ratio because oftentimes when people get hit, the first thing they want to do is they want to grab you and hold on. In K1, there is no holding. You you mm-hmm. just have to kick and punch and once. You know, you're you're staggered. They 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 command you to keep going. Wow, sounds rough. <laughs> no, it's it's pretty rough. I I would say it can't be any more rough than Muay Thai because Muay Thai is the most dangerous sport in the world. Mm-hmm. I mean that that sport has more deaths than any other sport, and I believe wow. that's something that's every year. Yes. Yeah. Now uh, a couple questions. You, you're going to have to yes. talk about the world championship. But, of course. Uh, uh, I, I'm going to ask you the question that I asked you. Uh, was it a week ago? Uh, sure. Are you going to retire now that you have now that you're on top? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that, Still that, is, that is the golden question, huh? <laughs> well, you don't have to I, answer. I actually, just... no, no, no. I love to answer it. Actually, August twentieth, I am going to be fighting. Um, possibly defending my world title or maybe picking up a new international title. We're still in the, in the midst of talking about that, but it is confirmed that I will be fighting August 20th on pay-per-view. Wow. Yes. Okay. Uh, You're, you're, you're going to be well-trained by the time that you get to that fight. Yes. Yes, I am. And one of the things is, you know, I'm a little older now. I'm not, you know, old per se but for the sport you know i'm 40 years old now and i am the world champ i am the wbc national champ i have some other titles um i have a target on my head everybody's coming after me because they're like we got the 40 year old guy as the champ we got to get him you know i'm 28 i'm i'm the stud i'm i've been training 15 years i want this man so i have a long line of people that are waiting to get me. And this is actually the funny story is the reason why I'm coming out of this. I said I was going to retire, but this guy, we were supposed to fight prior Hmm. and he's been calling me out for the, for probably the past three, about three and a half years. This guy has been calling me out. So, you know, he, he lived in Thailand. He's got 300 fights. Plus he's, He's a, he's a, he's, he's a rough guy, you know, but I've got to give him what he wants and I got to give the people what he, what they want. And especially, you know, my new found, uh, I don't want to say, what do I want to, how do I want to use this word? Uh, my new found stardom Mm -hmm. with our odd fellows, I would love for everybody to go ahead and see what I have because I'm getting I'm getting messages from Cuba, from the Philippines, odd fellows mm-hmm. that are congratulating me for being in the lodge. And I'm like, hey, I have over 100,000 followers on Instagram. I've noticed that my fights are getting, you know, that I have some fights that have millions of views. But now I'm getting odd fellows message me. And, you know, it's different than having just the regular you know, fan hit me up, say, Hey, can you come to Japan, do seminar? Can you come to Mexico, do seminar? You know, it, 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 it it holds a little bit more weight to me because I'm getting recognized by my brotherhood. You know, this is like getting endorsed by your family. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just something a little bit different. You know, like I've been an odd fellow for almost four years. You know, you're on your pod. This is your 15th podcast. I was a W. I was a WBC national champion 
you know, over a year ago, I was an international champion years ago. And now this is the first time that we're talking about this, you know, and I've had fights all over the internet. I've, I've been on movies, TV shows. I've been mm. in commercials. I've done modeling. I've done a whole bunch of stuff, but now my odd fellow brothers and, and sisters are seeing me and they're seeing me, you know, not as, Oh, he's a, he's a, 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 a world champion. They're seeing me as a, as a, as a brother, as a, mm -hmm. you know, as, as a, as a family. And mm -hmm. that holds a little bit more weight than just the average people, because I feel like if I lose, if I retire, eventually there's going to be a new world champion. You know, it, it, there is, yeah. that's just, that's it just, that's, that's just the works. end of the, yeah. That's just the name of the game, but I'll still be who I am in the brotherhood. You know, they'll still respect me. They'll still say, Hey, remember this guy? Here he is right here. Look, Jermaine, he was the world champ. You know, when I, when I relinquish my title, have to move over those same people that were asking me for seminars, you know, I might get some, but they're going to be asking the new champ. They're going to be wanting to see the new champ, you know, and who knows that might be my son, you know? Yeah. But, I was thinking but, about that. Yeah. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, is that they're going to be looking at someone else soon, you know? So I would like to give my brothers and my sisters at least one more good show against a good game worthy opponent, you know, so we can all say, hey, I was there for that one at least. Okay, yeah, because I remember whenever uh, uh, you, you had that, that fight, and there were people talking about it. I was like, wow, check this out. This is really great. And, yeah. you know, I I, uh, I didn't even, I think that it had happened before I had a chance to even see it. Yes. So, you know, um, one of the great things is that with social media, because I became aware of you through social media. Yes. Um, and this podcast has a lot of, you know, people who listen and, and people who follow and watch because I, I turned this into an audio podcast as well as a video podcast on youtube beautiful so um you know if, if you ever have any details or anything like that i can always update the description so that people will know uh you know when and where to tune in or uh how you know if it's a pay-per-view event like is it yes a pay -per -view? Okay, this is great. going to be a pay-per-view event uh it's on august 20th i know i'm going to be out there again um i was asked to come out to the um where is it north north carolina that's could be yeah i believe it's north carolina and i i was speaking with with one of my brothers and they were like well you know that's kind of close because um your fight's the 20th i said no it's not i said you know what? i'd love to come out there kind of do a show what i did with my son the last time but mm -hmm. this time, since I'm fighting, I'll bring my pad holder and and what I'll do is I'll just do an open workout out there, you know, and 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 that way the people can kind of get a good look at me and, and and what I'm doing. And then they can tune in to the pay-per-view, you know, and, and say, hey, you know, he was right here this time. We got to be involved this mm -hmm. time, you know, opposed to last time it was just, it was. um it wasn't hidden, but it just wasn't announced. And, and, you know, even when we were out there in, in, um, Modesto. Yeah. You know, they, they were talking about, Hey, why isn't this promoted? We have a world champion in, 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 in our group. He's not just a, 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 a guy. He's a world champion all over the world. And why is this promoted? in our on our paper how come this isn't on our website you know and a little bit maybe my fault i haven't been very vocal but i want to be vocal right now i want people okay. to see this i want people to see me you know not just our brotherhood i mean i want i want to, i want the world to see it you know this fight is on pay-per-view the world can view it you know after this it can go i i posted something online and, I, and I've got numerous, you know, odd fellows and Rebecca's in my inbox saying, hey, where can I see the fight? Where can I see the fight? And I said, look, this is, it was on Bally Sport. 
uh, you're just going to have to stay tuned and try to catch it. You know, and I, cause my, I had my nephew message me was like, Hey, uncle, you're fighting. And I said, Oh, really? And he sent me a little clip and he said, yeah, it's on at 11 o'clock tonight. And I posted it on my, on my Facebook page. I don't know if you've seen it, but uh, it, it was just the, um, it wasn't the fight. It was the actual, you know, Jermaine Soto versus uh, Justin Gerowitz, um, you know, main event. Mm -hmm. And it was on, it was on television and he, he, it wasn't, it was going to be aired. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you guys just got to catch it. This is the perfect opportunity for people to catch it, to be a part of it. Because honestly, I said last time, okay, this is going to be my last fight. But honestly, this time might really be my last fight. So I would really like, now that I, I can be a lot more involved, that people can be a lot more involved, I would like everybody to catch this, you know? So okay. now we can really go through this together. Say, hey, remember that time? I was right there. I saw it. You came down. You did an open workout. It was amazing. You know, this would be awesome. It'd yeah. be awesome. And it would be amazing if I could go ahead with the full on. Because, you know, mo most of the time we, we get all of our stuff through through sponsors and, and the sponsors do this and they do that. You know, I would really like to to kind of step aside from all that and 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 maybe get the Grand Lodge to, to back me with this, mm -hmm. you know. And, and just do an exclusive thing through our odd fellows. And I don't yeah. have to have to, cause you notice even when I came last time, you know, my short, my, my shirt had a number of, number of sponsors on there, mm -hmm. you know? And people were like, oh, well the odd fellows was in the middle. It would look way, it would be much better if I could just have odd fellows. Mm -hmm. wow. Just 100, 100%. Odd fellows on the front, odd fellows on the back, odd fellows on my hat, odd fellows on my banner, odd fellows on my fight shorts. You know, fighting out of the the odd fellows fellowship, fellowship world champion. You know, that would be, be awesome. awesome. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, and now then you when were... it gets when it gets you know played over on TV over and over and over, we're like, oh, dude, we're part of that group right there. You know. <laughs> Yeah, um, I was looking up what it is that you were talking about. You were talking about the Sovereign Grand Lodge, which is in North Carolina, Winston-Salem. Winston yes. And yes. the Sovereign Grand Lodge is going to have their annual sessions yes. August 15th to the 18th. Yes. And your fight is going to be on the 20th. And you said it's going to be in North Carolina, huh? No, my fight is going to be in San Diego. Oh, in San Diego. Okay, great. The, the Sovereign Grand asked me to come. Mm -hmm. And if I could do the same thing that I did out there. Mm -hmm. And I said, of course, I'm not going to. That's a great opportunity. Of course. Who's going to turn him down? Like, for real? So, but three days later, I was asked to fight. And I said, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and take this fight. Not just for me, but for my brothers and my sisters, you know, and for reputation. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I, I don't see it being a big deal because he told me personally, he said, you come down when you can, we'll work around your schedule. We'll fit, we'll make time for you. So it would be beautiful if I just go down there, do an open workout and now say, Hey, cause everybody should know about my fight by then. It's about three months away. Mm -hmm. You know, then do my open workout, tell everybody, Hey, Hey, you know, wish me good luck on the fight, fly back down here, get ready, fight on the 20th. And hopefully everybody will be tuning in and watching that and, you know, get that victory and yeah. either defend that title or, or get a new international title. Yeah. Now, one of the great things that we can do is if, uh -huh. if you want to, you could ask the sovereign grandmaster to, Make sure to put out an announcement to everybody so that we can yes. share about your fight on social media and get tens of thousands of people posting uh, that one of our odd fellows is going to be defending his uh, world championship uh, in a fight. And you can tune in, watch one of our odd fellows. Yeah, that's exactly what we're planning on doing. You know, we we we've been under the radar for quite some time because even me, when 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 my student was like, hey. 
going to come down to the lodge. I was like, um, I don't really know what that is. You know, what, what, what is that? You no, know, it's about time that we start addressing us to the, the youth, you know, not just the youth, but to the people that, that, that are, that are out here and that don't understand us. You know, they don't understand what we're about. We're about, you know, uh, we're about friendship, you know, you know, family, you know, we're about love, you know, uh, we're about, you know, uh, you know, we're about a lot of stuff, Yeah. you know, yeah. you know, helping out the community, mm-hmm. you know, we, we're trying to not be, cause I, even people hear us and they're like, what, what are you? You're part of those people. <laughs> what people like your secret society. You're, you're one of those people like what? No. We want to better our community, better our youth. In theory, we're trying to better the world. Yeah. We're everywhere. We're everywhere. You know, yes. we're just not where we used to be, mm-hmm. you know? And it's about that time to take that opportunity and show people what we're about. And, you know, this is a great opportunity to do it. I've noticed that... um I seen one of our brothers post at Elks Lodge mm-hmm. had a had had sponsored an athlete and was yeah. like, oh, well, they they're sponsoring somebody. You know, here's the perfect opportunity. We should do it right now. I don't see why we would wait. You know, we should we should get on this right now. Agreed. Now, yes. um, I, I'm looking forward to that. Now, uh, I, I did want to make sure that we had the opportunity for you to talk about your son. And oh, yeah, I don't know if you know this or not, but like the minimum age limit is 16. It's 16. Yes. So whenever your son turns 16, he can join your lodge. Yes. I'm sure yes. That you probably that's, already that's, thought of that. Right. But he, uh, al- he already knows that. He already okay. knows that. Um, we did. I think it was 2019 before COVID happened. Uh huh. You know, we're part of the parade. We have our, our, our float in the parade. Yes. We, but not, not just the Rose Parade, but we have our, our float in our town parade. Oh, nice. So in our, in our town parade, we got dressed in, in, our, um, the regalia? In, our Chris, in our Christmas suits. No, we oh, had Christmas, Christmas suits. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. we had Christmas suits. And um, my son was right there with me walking. And he's about, I think, maybe 11 years old. He's walking, handing out candy to all the kids with our odd fellows, you know? So he has a big influence as well, you know? So, of course, I'm, I'm going to mimic my son behind me, but a better version of me. So what I do, I want him to do, but better. So he already knows when he comes of age, he's going to be an odd, he's going to be a junior odd fellow. You know, I heard that there was like, there was a uh, like some odd fellow, junior odd fellows, uh, like um, I think it was thirty of them. They said that ended up closing or something, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. For for the junior odd fellows. Well, I mean, what what? Why can't we? Why can't we bring those back? You know, I mean, we have a kid who is a first ever um, California state champion. He's under his father, who is a world champion. We have kids that are that have their own TV shows working out with my son on the Disney Channel. You know, when we get people like this behind behind our students, you know, we I mean, and I can even I'm going to even go ahead and do as far as name drop. I have a boo boo steward at my gym who has who has one of the highest grossing TV show. I'm sorry, movies that Disney has ever produced. Wow. I, ha- I have a Dylan pill spray that comes in often to our gym and works out with me and my son, who is right now on location filming uh, MTV Teen Wolf. I don't know if wow. you remember Teen Wolf. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He come- yeah. He's right now. He's one of the lead stars and he comes down to our gym. So when we do stuff, we have people, you know, we have people that that have way more followers than I do, you know, that, that are known. And these are kid stars, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when he starts to do stuff, you know when they say, Hey, this is my buddy. Those people follow, you know, they follow, which is one of the crazy things about social media right now. People just, they just follow just to, just because they think it's the cool thing to do, you know, but if they follow, 
and they see a purpose and they say, oh my gosh, look at this. This kid has this and that, you know, we can start leading by example. And that's what we want to do. We want to show you what we're capable of doing, what we have. Hey, this is good. This isn't out here in the streets saying, you know, let's, let's do this drug. Let's, you know, drive this fancy car. Let's wear these expensive clothes and all this stuff. Let's do something more for the community. Let, let's help. Let's help keep these kids from riding on the side of our walls and our businesses. You know, let's keep these kids. Let's stop. Let's have. Let's influence these kids. Stop bullying these kids so they don't feel the need to have to come to school with a gun. You know, because they're upset or threatened. We're hearing about these things, and a lot of this is because. You know, forgive me if I'm saying something wrong, but a lot of this is because I feel it's poor parenting skills, you know, because why, why can't we stop all this, these mass shootings and these crazy things from happening? I understand that parents have, we have to work. It's hard to watch over our kids, but if, if they're around another kid that's a good kid that can help motivate them and influence them and say, hey, let's not do this. Let's do that. Who cares if you don't have the nice new Jordans coming to school? You know, who cares if your mom is working all the time or your dad is working all the time? You know, you have you have a mentor in the form of a buddy, a friend, a brother or a sister. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. And, you know, uh, it, it's unfortunate that there is, uh, you know, the sort of natural element of bullying that becomes part of these tragic stories that, uh, yes. you know, it's like, unfortunately, uh, people just aren't equipped or trained in, or even, you know, sometimes they, they don't have the courage. People want to step back and like, don't do anything. Don't, don't, you know, make the bully mad because they will come after you, you know? Yeah. Uh, so I, I understand that dynamic and, um, I know what you're saying about parenting. Parenting's a, yeah. a much harder job than I knew it would be. I mean, I've got a, a daughter who's uh, 14, and she's mm -hmm. going to be 15 soon, and we got her in Taekwondo, and oh, she got beautiful. the black belt, you know? So, That's uh, awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, it, it's, it, it definitely has helped her with things like focus, and she can still yes. kick really great, which is fantastic. Yeah. She, she had to use that because she got attacked on the playground, you know, uh, la uh, earlier this year. Crazy. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of stuff that's going on. But uh, I, I tell you something, it's it's just hard for kids to get involved and put an end to bullying. You know, they, they, yeah. they have a hard time standing up to bullies. And whenever they see somebody getting bullied, you know, they usually just stay out of it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's unfortunate. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. You know, we need to get the right kids behind it. You know, because you you think of, of you think of gangs, you know, and it's hard, it's bad to say, but it would be like you know these kids these kids get in their 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 group, and they could be I guess I don't want to say uh, 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 I don't well, I like to use that gang, but I mean like a good gang, you know, mm -hmm. a positive gang, you know, to 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 help influence people. You know, and 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 that would be awesome. You know, if we could start doing something like that, because I own a martial arts gym and I'm looking to try to sponsor some kids. You know, I have some kids now, but I'm looking to try to sponsor some kids, you know, go to these. The first thing when I went to, and it's crazy because when I went to the school, when we first opened, I went to the schools and said, hey, I want to help these kids. And you know what I was told? We do not want to promote violence at our school. Right, right, right. And I'm like, I'm like. Uh, I'm trying to teach them martial arts. I'm trying to teach them. I'm trying to teach them, uh, uh honor, respect, loyalty, discipline. confidence, yeah. discipline. That's the last thing I want them to do is fight. But they're yeah. like, no, 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 no. We just can't have it. And I'm like, oh my goodness. You know how many people that could have possibly been saved if they would have been in a martial arts program? You know, some of these kids, like I said. Some of these kids are being bullied because of neglect. Mm -hmm. My father figure for a number of years 
was my martial arts instructor. I wasn't out there bullying kids, trying to beat them up because I knew how to do martial arts. I was out there trying to get back to my gym and train. I was having good, I was, I was getting, I was getting a lot of confidence, even though my instructor was out there with the stick hitting on us, mm -hmm. you know, I love that stuff. I don't know why I loved it so much, but you know, all, 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 all of us, we like those karate movies. You know, we like to see them do all that, that crazy stuff. You know, mm -hmm. it's cool. You know, we, we, we build a fixation off that. And, yeah. and, and, you know, it, it's a shame that we don't have enough people. And to tell you the truth, because martial arts is so popular, it's a very expensive sport. Mm. It's it, basketball. All these sports are expensive too, but martial arts, let's be real, is a very expensive sport. It's expensive. You have to buy all this gear. You have to pay your monthly dues. Yep. You know, you have to pay your testing fees. You have to do mm -hmm. all this stuff, and, and it's expensive. So, of course, some of these people can. <laughs> yeah, you know. You already know. <laughs> now, another word for Taekwondo is take my dough, you know, <laughs> because it's it's a very expensive sport. So, yeah, but there's a lot of value that you get out of it, though. Well, you, know? you, you, you can't put a price on that. But because yeah. of some of the people can't afford it, they just say, okay, you just go play at the park or here, play your video games. Then they're on the then they're on their video games and they start to get bullied or they're talking crazy. They're being trained in some crazy other ways. You know, they're not able to do it because their parents are just. And I think that's something that we should we should try to do, you know, try to get a few of these kids, sponsor some of these kids and, you know, maybe talk to some of these schools. You know, I'm, I, I've I have a list of all the schools in my area. You know, I'm going to give it a try again. To see, you know, what what can I do? Get some of these bad kids, and 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 not not necessarily bad kids, but some of these kids that aren't doing very well. Mm -hmm. You know, they're maybe being maybe bullying, and bring them into the gym, you know, and 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 see how they act, you know, and get them back out there, and maybe they can change some lives. Yeah, you know, because it dripples down from the top. Yeah, and you know, I really kind of like the idea of what you were saying about having like a, a good gang, right? Um, I, I could just imagine having a Junior Oddfellows Lodge of, of kids yes. that are brothers and sisters, you know, at a school. And like, they're like a big family. Yes. You know how it is that like, yes. you don't want to pick pick on or, you know, get picked on by like that kid because their brother is going to come after you, you know, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, we can exactly. protect each other. We're stronger together, exactly. right? Exactly, exactly. And that's exactly what what I want I plan on doing. Okay. You know, my son, he's 13. But he has kids that are 18. Not one of his best friends is almost 17 years old. Hmm. He drives a car. He comes and picks my son up and they go hang out. And these and these kids, they look up to him. And I've never even heard of that. A 17-year-old kid looking up to a 13-year-old kid. Well, you know? let's not leave out the details. Now, your, yeah. your son is a state champion. Yes, right? yes, 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 yes. But he also, the, all, the kids also train with him, too. Uh -huh. So they get behind him. And these kids, like, they're, they're good kids. They're well, good, good kids. I mean, they, they, they started off a little rocky. Mm -hmm. but, but, you know, they've, we, I have helped mold them into being responsible, good, young children mm -hmm. and that's why that's why i don't mind my son go him picking my son up and them going out somewhere hanging out and coming back later on in the evening because i know i, you know, I, they I are, know yeah. yeah i know i know exactly what they're capable of doing i know nobody's going to be able to mess with them number one and number two that they're responsible they're not going to be going around looking for problems mm -hmm. they're going to do exactly what they're supposed to do and if anything does happen now, my son might not tell me 100% in detail, but they will tell me 100% detail without leaving any speck out. Uh -huh. That's awesome. Well, um, do you want to uh, uh, talk a bit about your, your son? Uh, sure. Yeah, tell us. Well, he, he's, he actually is leaving to thailand august 2nd or something yeah maybe august 1st he's going to be leaving to thailand for about a month and he's going to do his training out there 
and he's, you know, and like I said, I've, I've worked with him. I know who he is. He's going to go out there and he's not going to be, oh my gosh, I'm away from my family. I can go ahead and just act wild. I know exactly right, what he's right. going to do. He's going to take awesome. full advantage of that opportunity. Uh, Muay Thai has just become an Olympic sport. The Olympic committee messaged me. They wanted me to, to actually try out for the team. But I said, you know, you guys are holding the Olympics in 2024. That means I have to continue to fight. So I said, you know, thank you, but no thanks. You know, <laughs> it's a great opportunity. I mean, I, I, I fought in Pan Am games. I fought in the U.S. Open. I fought in the Junior Olympics. I've been down this road for many, and many, and many years. And it would be awesome to be like, man, I, I fought in this. I won. I won over here. And now I'm, I changed to a completely different sport. And now I'm going to win over here. So, but, you know, but I said, you know what? I'm, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to let my son do whatever he chooses to do. And he's looking real forward to it. So it's one of the reasons why he's going to be out there. He's going to go out there and he's going to do his thing. He's going to come back here. We're probably going to be sending him out to different places every so often. You uh -huh. know, uh, my last camp, I was in Puerto Rico uh, doing boxing, Puerto Rican boxing, which is a little bit different than the boxing we have out here, hmm. you know, is, is a different style of boxing. So I had my uncle, uh, by the way, is the mayor of Ricon in Puerto Rico, hmm. and he was a professional fighter as well. So he set up camp and we fought, we trained and we trained and actually he more than likely will be, will be, um, cornering me for my next fight, August 20th. I mean, wow. and, th and that'll be a good, he cornered me for my, for my WBC national champ, but he just, it was too much for him to get away because, you know, he, he took off from work some time and the man hasn't had an off day in like 10 years. Hmm. So he took some time off from work, came out to California, which he had never been to California before, stayed for two weeks and then went back to Puerto Rico. And I know he caught hell because there's a lot of stuff out there that they were like, hey, what are you doing? He's, he, and he's, he's just a workaholic, workaholic. So I'm trying to let him know early that, hey, I'm going to need you out here. And wouldn't that be something to have the mayor of Puerto Rico with, with one of our odd fellow shirts on as a, when I walk out to the ring? Sure. Yeah, he, he actually <laughs> had, he, he actually wore, our, wore the same shirt last time. You uh -huh. know, so it, it, it is on there. And of course, you know, he, he, he has a lot of control over in that country and we were on radio shows out there and it was a big deal. He said, oh, when, when he posted a picture of me, it was like maybe 10 minutes later, he said, I have 360 messages already wishing you good luck, you know? Wow. Yeah. So yeah, it was, it was, it, it's, it's been a whole surreal experience and, and even when I was in Puerto Rico, I tried to go to the Odd Fellows Lodge. I emailed yeah. them. I emailed them. Didn't get an email back. I emailed them again. So if somebody from there is watching this, know that I emailed them twice. Didn't get a response. And I was like, I'm not going to go there, you know, because it's kind of the pandemic kind of going on, yeah. you know, kind of, sort of. But, you know, I try to get to the lodge next time. You know, we, we like to, I'd like to visit the, visit that lodge, you know, next time we're out there. Well, maybe if you have the, the mayor that you were talking about, go join the lodge, then well, you know, that, he that, can hook you that, up. That was the, that was the initial goal uh -huh. because I told him, I, I, I told him, I told my cousins, you know, his kids that, yo, I want to go to the lodge. They're like, what is this lodge? What is this? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, dude, and I told him and I said, you know, I, and, you know, and, and, you know my, my family is very tight. They're very tight. So, you know, if I go out there, and they, they definitely will, and he definitely will put a lot of support behind them as well, you know. We're very tight. If he sees it's something that I'm, I'm, I have my heart in, he definitely will get behind it as well. Mm -hmm. Definitely, you know. Well, very good. Um, I don't know if there's anything that we left out that you wanted to cover, but I will be sure to get the information that, uh, you know, for the fight and yes. where people can, you know, do the pay-per-view and make yeah. sure that they pay for it and watch it. I'll be Beautiful. happy to make sure that's in there. And, yes. Uh, I appreciate that. Maybe we can get, get on this again, you know, uh, midway during my training and talk a little bit more about it. 
Sure. I'd be happy to have you. That'd be great. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, Joseph. All right. Thank you. And okay. uh, thank you. <laughs> all right. Uh, well, everybody, uh, tune in next time for our next uh, podcast, and uh, we'll see you all around. Yes. Thank you so much.